thanks for being with us. I'm Jen Clymer, and I'm so excited to be here today with Helen Richmond and her granddaughter, Julia Lester. Uh, it's going to be a wonderful conversation. Sit back, relax, enjoy the clips. Here we go. Hi, Helen. Hello, darling. Here, here's my, my beautiful granddaughter here, Julia. Hi. Hi. <laughs> How are you? I'm great. Thanks for having us. Good. Oh, absolutely a pleasure. Um, so, Helen, why are we here today? Why are we here today? Because, well, we're in between Julia's jobs and we, uh, we got her. This is really a generational thing for you. I mean, did you catch the acting bug because of grandma and grandpa? Yeah. I mean, it, start, it started with them, you know. Um, go ahead. Yeah. Well, gra grandpa was Peter Mark Richmond, mm -hmm. uh, who did many, many television shows and also a William Wyler movie called Friendly Persuasion. Um, and grandma is here, and uh, I was a stage actress. Um, and um, then it went to the next generation. This is all the genes that this young lady has. And uh, her mother is opening tonight in an off-Broadway play called A Revival of uh, Woman of the Year, off-Broadway, wow. yes. Um, and um, uh, she's a, a marvelous singer, um, actress. And her father just finished three years of touring with the national company of the Tony Award winning play, The Band's Visit. Wow. Um, so there's those genes. <laughs> and then there's the other ones that go to um, her uncle Lucas, who is the conductor of the Bangor Main Symphony. And it goes to um, her uncle, um, let me see who, oh, Uncle Orion, who is a movie producer. and. Uh, and all through Julia's growing up, there was somebody performing for something, and we never had a problem for entertaining uh, for the, somebody's birthday because all the kids came and sang and danced. I can remember Julia doing a beautiful ballet I wish it, for my husband, Peter Marks. Uh, 80th birthday. Mm. Uh, were you about seven? I was. Okay, yeah. and she was beautiful, uh, <laughs> doing a ballet for us. Yes, and so, and we and there was always performing going on in the house, you know. And Julie was always a part of it. I bring up her uncle Lucas because that was a, a performance that Julia starred in um, of a short musical called The Open Heart, which Peter Mark wrote the lyrics and Lucas Richmond, my third child, wrote the music for, and it was presented uh, on Peter Mark's 90th birthday as a full uh, per per performance, and Julia was wonderful in it. I promise you'll have a chance to speak at some point. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Here's, oh, I'm a great listener. Yeah, I love no, this. No, no. Okay. Here's Julia. No, no, no. <laughs> We're going to stay focused on you for just another minute or two, okay? Because um, you do have this rich history of performance, and you only touched on some of what you did. Let's hear more about your career. I thought I would save my career for when I am going to soon be doing uh, behind the silver screen. Okay. And I will talk, talk, talk about all the wonderful stage things and especially the most wonderful part I ever played in my life, which was Blanche Dubois in A Streetcar Named Desire. I can talk forever really? about that. I've no. heard of that play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, so that I don't really, it, it, what, what happened, what's happening with Julia is very interesting. And I think it would be very interesting to our my beautiful friends here. A lot of them are crew people. And for instance, our makeup ladies at, uh, or men and our wardrobe would know would like to know that Julia worked wardrobe and worked makeup on many a production as she grew up. Right? Yes. Thank you. Where did it come from? Where did that interest come from? Hmm. I don't know. I always loved fashion and makeup and exploring different um, 
mediums of expression and those two things sort of were a very big part of my self-expression growing up. Um, I got really into watching makeup tutorials and fashion videos on YouTube and online because the internet obviously was a very big part of my uh, childhood growing up. So um, that's where I really got interested in those um, in those things. And, and in high school, I was a part of the film department at my high school. I went to Calabasas and um, uh, we did a senior capstone film and I got to cast it as well as do the makeup and wardrobe for it. So it was sort of all of my favorite things um, in one that I got to do behind the scenes for this film. So yeah, I've gotten to sort of dip my toes in, in a few of those um, uh, hobbies of mine as well. Yeah. And it sounds like from a very young age, you had exposure to any kind of aspect of performance that you were interested in. How did that all begin? Um, we talked a little bit about your dance background. Yeah. Well, um, as, as you were saying, both of my parents are performers and um, I was just really immersed in the world of theater and performing. And um, uh, since I was born since before I was born. Um, and so it really started with them. And, and I have two older sisters who are al also both performers. Um, and I, I remember really growing up what really sparked my interest in, in being a performer or an actress specifically was watching a lot of movies that had young, uh, heroic female characters in them, such as uh, Secret Garden and mm -hmm. Matilda and Wizard of Oz was like the you played Dorothy. I did. I did play. I played Dorothy when I was twelve, uh, which was a very full circle because Wizard of Oz was one of the first things that gave me an interest in wild imagining and performing and being an actress. So I, I grew up with a lot of these movies and and some TV shows as well that uh, had young heroic female lead characters. And I was always like, I love that. I want to do that. I'm so inspired by these actors and the stories that they're able to tell. And um, yeah, so I think watching my parents do it as their profession and my sisters have an interest in it as well um, was a part of it. And then also just the, the media that I grew up consuming was uh, very inspiring for me. Yeah. And I mean, generationally, you had plenty of exposure um, and growing up in Southern California right. was also. Yeah. I mean, I, I also didn't know that there's other jobs besides being a performer <laughs> because my whole family, whether it's <laughs> acting or, or some type of uh, a music profession or production, like anything that has to do with the arts, I just didn't even know that there was a world outside of the arts that you can uh, immerse yourself in. Oh, well, you were in every young play that was done in elementary school and high school. Yes. I mean, you, she started, she played in Into the Woods, The Cow. <laughs> yeah, you I did. played Milky Way. I did. And, and would it's... you like to proceed as to what happened into the woods? Sure. I, I mean, I did a lot of community theater growing up, and so Into the Woods was one of the first shows that I did, which mm -hmm. is a spectacular show. Oh, I mean, it's it's just the best. It, you know, top tier. Yeah. But um, that was a really special show because I I was ten years old and I got to play Milky White. My sister Lily was uh, twelve, and she was Little Red Riding Hood. And then our oldest sister, Jenny, who was in high school, I think she was, I think she was about 17, was the baker's wife. And so the oh. three of us did a show together. Um, we did a lot of shows together, the three of us, but that one specifically, it was like very, very prominent in our, in our memories together as children. Sure. Um, and then... Talk about uh, how, what happened with Into the Woods. Oh, okay. Oh, you couldn't be <laughs> proud of this moment. <laughs> Right, Helen, this isn't a big deal. I'm sorry. But I, I mean, this is an unusual uh, career here. And I, I haven't digested everything that's happening yet to her, or to her. But this is a lovely story. Oh, thank you. Well, I so I did that production when I was 10. And I did lots of community theater in between. And one of my very first professional shows that I did uh, as an adult outside of high school was Into the Woods. So it came back into my life. 
and I got to play Little Red Riding Hood when I was 18, and that was a really huge deal for me. Um, it was so much fun. I met so many wonderful friends that I still have to this day from that production. Um, and when I was 18, I, I really thought that that was the last time I would play Little Red because, you know, she's, she's usually played by a child and 18 is uh, kind of pushing it. So I thought that maybe that would be my last opportunity to play that role. And I really loved the part and we did it. We did the show for about three months. It was a very long run. And so I really, you know, soaked up every moment and thought, this will, yeah. Where was that production? Um, that was in, uh, it was in North Hollywood. Okay. Yeah. So I really soaked in every moment of that production and really was like, you know, next time I do this show, maybe I'll be, you know, an older character. Um, but I love this role. And um, that show came and went. And uh, a few years later, we're in uh, 2022. And I have the, uh, the opportunity to audition for a concert style production of the show in New York for uh, a company called Encores. Um, it's like a two week concert style engagement. And there was a really incredible cast that was already lined up, including Sarah Bareilles, who's one of my biggest inspirations of all time. And I was like, well, I'm, uh, you know, I'm 22 now, but if they want a 22 year old red, here I am. And so I, I submitted a tape for it. And, um, Stephen Sondheim, uh, who was a part of the production at the time before his passing, uh, saw my tape and um, wanted me to be a part of that production. So that was really a huge moment for me. I, I like the, 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 the sentence that your agent said uh, that exactly what happened when Stephen Sondheim saw your tape. He said, that is who I want to play Little Red. Yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Which is, I mean, any theater kid's dream I, yeah. for, for Sondheim himself to, to watch you perform in any way, to, to see your face on anything. I mean, come on. That's like, you know. <laughs> and to have him hear you doing his work and then saying that that's, that's it. Right. That's the right interpretation. It was like a miracle. Right. I mean, that's the high, highest compliment. It yeah. was a beautiful happening in her life that she realizes even I wish he I wish he had seen her play it but to think that Stephen Sondheim to know so so soon before he passed saw mm. Julia and said that's who I want you know, I mean it's a beautiful thing to have happened yeah you know yeah. but there's more to this story because I am a theater geek yeah <laughs> And As know, we all are. Yes. yes. <laughs> uh, I know that didn't end up being a two-week concert. No, it didn't. Um, so we opened that show in, in May of last year, so almost, almost a year ago now. And uh, very quickly, everybody came to realize that this production, this, this concert-style two-week engagement was something very special and something uh, very, very rare. And sold out audiences. Sure. That was also helpful. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was uh, the the highest um, how do you say it the the most sought after ticket it, for that time in New York which is Indeed. which is crazy yeah. and 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 so we all sort of knew that this production was very special and by week two of the shows um, there was talks for it to transfer so that it would have a, a larger life outside of what they had planned. And pretty soon I came to find out that the show would be transferring to Broadway. And so I did um, about two and a half months of the show on Broadway last summer and um, made my Broadway debut in the second revival of Into the Woods. Just a little thing like that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Just casual. Not a big tell, deal. Tell, <laughs> tell, tell what the, the, the actor who played the wolf, what, he, what happened on the opening night curtain. Oh, sure. Um, Gavin Creel, who uh, is still currently in the touring production of the show. He plays uh, the wolf in Cinderella's Prince. Um, just an absolute angel of a human. Really took me under his wing um, the second that I got to New York in April for the Encores production. It was my very first show in New York ever. And I was definitely, what's the term? A, a little fish in a big pond, right? Yeah, I, I, you know, I was Sarah Bareilles, Heather Headley, Neil Patrick Harris. That was the, the original Encores cast. It was, I mean, I was 
starstruck beyond belief. And this was my New York debut period. And he really took me under his wing and um, became a great friend and mentor to me throughout both productions. And on our very first preview of Into the Woods on Broadway at the St. James, during the curtain call, he threw his arm around me and sort of gestured to the audience and said, you're on Broadway, baby. <laughs> and sort of, in a way, passed the baton. It really felt like somebody had done that for him yeah. in his early career. And he was sort of passing that experience on to and me. And the look on your face, <laughs> which I said, we have a picture yeah, yeah. Right of, at that moment. And I, you're, you seem to be wanting to include the, uh, the people up uh, uh, on the balcony. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. I, you know, if ever I got to see a show, I would always sit sort of yeah. upwards. So I, I know that. that very, very nice. Yeah. So maybe, uh -huh. a, maybe a little me is up there somewhere. <laughs> but um, yeah, that was, that was really special and definitely inspired me to hopefully one day be able to make that gesture for another young performer um, in a few years too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and that moment happens once. Right. You know, right. it's a big deal. Yeah. Um, did you guys have a, a gypsy robe that happened for you? No, not for that theater specifically, but we did do a sort of ritualistic, um, I keep saying passing the baton, but yeah. really it, it is sort of that. Um, before the, our first preview, which... I, I didn't realize that the first preview of the show is really your opening night as your Broadway debut. Once opening night happens, you've been running for a few weeks at that point. And that, of course, is, is its own celebration in itself. But really, the first preview is when all of the Broadway debuts get to, get to be celebrated. And so Gavin, of course, spearheaded this, um, this thing that maybe was a tradition or is a tradition now, him as well as Philippa Sue, who was Cinderella in the, in the original Broadway production, our original Broadway production, um, passed around uh, name tags to everybody except the Broadway debuts. And we didn't know what was happening. And everybody had written down uh, the show that they debuted in. So we had um, someone who wrote down, you know, uh, Spelling Bee 2006 or Pippa had written Hamilton 2015. So wh wh whichever year they made their debut in. And then all of the debuts in Into the Woods got to join in the middle and write down Into the Woods 2022 right. as our uh, debut. And we all got to wear name tags. Oop. We all got to wear name tags that said it. Yeah. And uh, we all sort of got to crowd around in the middle and turn around and look at the audience. And everybody who had been on Broadway before us came up behind us and put their hands on our shoulders. And Ooh, we sort of all wow. breathed together and, and, and took in the moment. And <laughs> you're right, it only happens once. And yeah. so it was really special that these, you know, really established Broadway veterans took the time to make sure that our debut and our moment was special and specific That's to us. Lovely, very yeah. moving story. Yeah. Yeah. It was wow. really special. Yeah. And your reviews as Little Red. Oh, oh. Were New York Times special <laughs> story on Julia. Yeah. Oh, and and may I quote? Comedy gold. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I got it from somebody. Oh, well, I don't know about that, but except I'm pretty funny. Yeah, <laughs> come on. Of course. <laughs> uh, okay, so you went to see the show. Oh, I went to New York to see her Broadway debut. I said, when they, when I said, I'm not going to New York City unless one of you are on Broadway. And I thought I was clear. And that would, you know, <laughs> what, what, what kind of a thing is that to, to say? And next thing I know, Julia, I'm going you to New it. York because somebody's I did. on Broadway. I forced her onto a plane. Isn't that crazy? Yes. Oh, my gosh. No, I wasn't going to miss that. Of course. Oh, my That was gosh. so special that you were there to see that. Oh, my gosh. Flew all the way out, like, in the, in the depth of New York summer. It is hot. Yes, it is sticky. Hot. <laughs> no one wants to be there. And she flew across the country. I, well, I did. But of me. course, one of my sons and his wife took me. You know, I wasn't going to go alone. Right. So right, I right. was in good hands. But, you know, it was a trip. But, uh, that, I mean, it, 
what, what is life about if you're going to not take advantage of your granddaughter going on Broadway? <laughs> Good Lord. I, uh, you know, I, that's a, that is a memory that is beautiful to me mm. forever and ever. Me too. Well, I bet you. Yeah. <laughs> I was counting down the days till you were there. It was so special. Oh, for the, oh yeah. you mean when I was there? Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Julia. Yeah, of course. That's very meant nice. Meant the world. I love that her assumption was that you meant Broadway. Oh, you... no. Counting down the days till you were there. Oh, look at, it. Look at that. <laughs> well, you know, it, 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 always, always uh, uh, respecting and loving family and wanting to participate. Uh, that's Julia when she is here and able you know, um, and um, that, that's why one of the reasons I sent you a clip of the open heart is because there were four members of the family performing in that, and Julia was one of them. You, so it, it was a very moving, and it was only, I think, one song. Yeah, mm -hmm. one song is, well, she was in a lot of other things, but she had one uh, a real song. Right. Number. And... Um, I was moved by that because oh. I struggled with my relationship with my mother. There was constant fighting and constant like push pull and, and it, it was encapsulated so well. And of course you've got a beautiful voice and Thank you. Uh, it was lovely. Well, and yeah. we'll play that clip in the edit, but the time is valuable. I want to keep, uh, keep us talking here unless yeah. you, if there's something you really want to hear. Uh, oh no, no, no. I, I'm thank you, Jen. I, I, when I heard it in choosing the clips, um, I sat there absolutely again crying <laughs> because her performance, uh, I don't know what to tell you, but I'm not surprised that you were moved. Thank Very you. Much. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. And I, I didn't know that um, Peter Mark had written it. He, he wrote the lyrics. He, he developed it at the actor's studio. Okay. And, and, the, and, and, and in the development, there was some music written. But then I must tell you, my son Lucas, uh, who has conducted, guest conducted, the New York Philharmonic, the Pittsburgh Philharmonic, the, the Philadelphia Orchestra, the LA Phil, whatever, it was busy. All right, so he did not finish this project. And he said to, his, to, him, to the rest of the family, I, this is going to be the, the 90th birthday gift for our Peter Mark Richmond. And he got, he finished writing the music. He cast the rest of it, plus the four family members, Julia being one of them. And it's a we tough put audition. on yeah, a really musical, tough. Yeah, you know, for his, and so yes, uh, th it was an extraordinary e e experience. But always when, like the same way when she was seven and she's ballet dancing for his 80th, you know, I mean, she was always there. And always willing in, in the and the, for the 80th, the, the, all the grandchildren they sang from Bye Bye Birdie. But the Jenny, her older sister, she wrote a parody. We love you, Grandpa. Oh, yes, we do. And and in the front row, one of our guests was the man who had the lead on Broadway in Bye Bye Birdie, Dick Gautier. And he says, "That's my song." I didn't know that. Oh, yes. Oh, wow. Dick Gautier is sitting there. I Great. didn't realize you kids were going to be singing from Bye Bye Birdie. Oh, my and gosh. And Dick Gautier says, that's my song. That's so funny. <laughs> yeah. yeah. My sister Jenny wrote that parody. She was 14, which is like, that's pretty, that's pretty genius yeah. to, be able to, to be able to do that at 14. Yeah. Well, yeah. well, Jenny has a bit of genius in her. She is an um, actress, writer. Um, uh, producer, director, director, and she uh, has already finished producing her first movie called uh, What She Said. Yeah, and starring in it. Producing. Oh, and I'm sorry, and starring and in wrote it. it and wrote it. Yes, okay. she's a machine. It's pretty cool. So I wish you were a little more proud of your family. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's terrible. I, I, I can't. <laughs> how can I stop talking about? First of all, they're all they're all humanitarians. They're all always wanting to help each other. Well, and you you and Peter Mark, also that's where that comes from well, because I, you have been supporting MPTF and other charities 
for your entire... That is true. They did get an example from us. Peter Mark was on the board here at MPTF for over 20 years. Right. And he, I don't know, a lot of people don't realize, he was chairman of the building committee that built the hospital. And wow. he was on all these committees that he would come to many meetings here, the case committee, the hospital committee. And then the other thing, because he's, aside from being an actor, he was a wonderful artist. He knew a lot about art. So when he became a board member here, um, he, he came home one day and he said, you know, they don't know what they're doing with the art that gets donated to MPTF. He says, I found something on the floor of a closet. I said, he says, and he knew who to take it to the specialist and say, should we sell this and make money for MPTF or should we hang it? Is this something we should hang? And he was in charge of the art that was donated, you know, among many other things that he did. Yeah. And our other very, very favorite um, charity was the Jeffrey Foundation uh, for Special Needs Children. Um, yes. And he would MC many, many affairs that they had for fundraising yeah. there too also. So, yes. So... You set an example for the rest of your family in I these humanitarian so. efforts. I hope so, but I do see them very, very interested in humanity and and helping others. And of course, the way they work together. You know, when they they all went to a, a, Taft High was down the street from where we lived. You know, and and we had and they would this. Before they could drive, they could walk to school. And then the kids would come up the block, and our living room was full of music all the time because the three older ones, they were in the choir. And the choir would come up, and they would rehearse in our living room. And there was always music happening, you know. And um, the, the, the kind of... I'm very grateful for the excitement of uh, in my life of, of being a mother. It wasn't just, you know... Um, oh, I have to take her to classes or whatever, or carpool, or, you know, it was beyond that. And then, of course, attending, well, all of, first of all, all of Julia's, uh, 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 so many plays that yes. she was in, you know, we would go to everything, Peter Mark and I. Mm -hmm. and, and Peter Mark, he, he was, he, he loved these children so much. Yeah. He was a, a beautiful grandfather, and, and he just praised them and he loved them and uh, he was a, a um, well aside from these kids he was a baby lover and I fell in love with him when I saw him pick up a baby in Summerstock we met in Summerstock in, in New Angola Pennsylvania and and I saw him I said this handsome young man look how he's looking at that baby I said he must really love babies and I said I think that's the moment I fell in love with him <laughs> So gentle uh, and loving and so affectionate and wonderful and um he was. Yeah. I know. Yeah, he loves his grandchildren. Oh boy, did yeah. he love his grandchildren. Oh yeah. Oh my god, yes. Yeah. If only you did. If only I, I could have some of that love for <laughs> Right, <me>. right. <laughs> um, so you have how many children? I have five children. Have I five have four children. sons and one daughter, which is the mother of Julia Lester. Her name is Kelly Lester, and she is a magnificent singer, actress. And we've shown Kelly's performance um, during COVID here on the TV station. You sent us the link for You're in Town. Oh, wow. Oh, You're in Town. Yeah, and you made us show that on the TV station. <laughs> Sorry about that, but, you know, I couldn't, I don't like to keep things for myself. <laughs> No, you share. I love that you of share. Course. You know what else you shared? You know, you know Jenny's uh, a bigazunt. Yes, absolutely. Oh boy, did they play that one? Absolutely. Jenny, her older sister, she was the director and the conceiver of that project of those three young ladies singing that Yiddish song. Yeah, yeah. It was a yeah. good. Uh, you know, it's time to bring it back, Jen. Sure. <laughs> right. Yeah, we do. You know, jukeboxes. Yeah, and. Um, we recently had a Passover jukebox that had a bunch of wonderful Yiddish videos as part of it. So, Aww. well, I've got a new one comes Hanukkah because I have a grandson. Um, his name is Oliver Richman, and he has a new Hanukkah video that I'm going to get to you for Hanukkah. Wonderful. You guys just. You are the content on Channel 22. I mean, <laughs> without us, it's the Richmond family extravaganza. <laughs> it, truly, truly. Are you in the Hanukkah or not? Or you weren't around? In his music video? Yeah. Oh, I'm in it. 
Oh, I don't remember. You, the, the little clips we sent in yeah, of all yeah, the family? Oh, that's what you sent all the Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He came, the Oliver came, and um, we had a menorah in our a country house dining room, mm -hmm. and uh, and um, he, he he did everything with his phone. He's, he's photographing, and he made this whole video with a phone, and he took he did the menorah, and then he took me over to, uh, he, uh, Grandma was in it, that's me, and, and he took me to the Rose Garden, because he wanted to know, he was lucky he had one older person in that because, you know, it's Hanukkah, you have to have another generation. So that was grandma. Yep. So. <laughs> yeah, you were the star of that video. Well, I was in a few scenes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She's, well, she's you'll, you'll, get it. It. you'll get it. You'll get it. Yeah, great. Okay. <laughs> Lovely. Okay. Great. All right. So uh, we talked a little bit about a big moment, the Broadway debut. Um, but before that, you have done television. Yeah. So, and also musically related. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? And and what was your impression the first time that you heard that Julia got this great role in High School Musical, the musical? Oh, oh you mean the Disney Plus show? Yeah. Yes. Um, um, it was a very, very big deal. And I was so happy for her. And Julia has had four seasons of High School Musical, the musical, the series, playing the part of Ashton. And she's wonderful in it. You, you can tell Jen how much you enjoy it. Thank you. I enjoy it very much. <laughs> um, that show came around. Um, I was 18, so this was my in like my second year out of high school, I technically would have been a sophomore in college. I was doing a production of Shrek at the time um, in Thousand Oaks, so fun. And um, I got an audition on my phone while I was in rehearsal. I was, I was sitting on the side waiting to go on and I saw on my phone that it said uh, High School Musical. It, it had a different title at the time, so it was High School Musical, the musical or high school musical series or something, but the words high school musical really jumped out at me because those, um, for those that are watching may not know that it is a huge movie franchise in the Disney world, Disney corporation. Um, and they were really prominent in my childhood. So, you know, when I was a kid, anywhere you looked on any street corner was some billboard for High School Musical, some you know, merch in every store you went to. It's a huge deal. They made three movies from 2006 to 2009 or 10. Um, and uh, they never made a fourth movie and nothing ever came after those movies. And for a few years after that, Disney had been wanting to sort of uh, resurge the um, franchise in a way, but they never really. Why? Right? You know. Why? We'll see. There's, there's that because sure. they never and really worked. No, because I mean, it's a money making machine. Right. Wildcats merchandise. There you go. It launched a bunch of really wonderful actors' careers. Exactly. Uh, the Greatest Showman wouldn't be the same without Zach. Exactly. Who cut his teeth in High School Musical. Yeah, absolutely. I yeah. mean these these, they were kids at the time, these kids that were in these movies, I mean, skyrocketed beyond anything you can imagine, yeah. fame-wise. I mean, they were, you know... The, rock stars. Ro yeah, real rock stars, globally known. Right. Um, they went on a tour with, with the show afterwards. Um, I mean, huge success. And so for years after that, Disney was sort of questioning how they can do that again or, or keep it alive in some way. And so um, actually, funny enough, when I was 16, I auditioned for uh, High School Musical 4, I think it was. And it was like a concept idea for another movie that was um, uh, maybe, I don't really remember specifically, but it maybe have been like the kids of the original High School Musical characters or another generation of, of East High kids from the High School Musical world. And that never really went anywhere. And I think there were a couple other projects that they were trying to make. And then uh, come 2018, um, they, they tried again. 
And this time, uh, High School Musical, the musical, the series, was created by Tim Federley, who is our creator, head writer, showrunner, mentor of mine, wonderful, beyond wonderful person, um, created this series that was not a continuation of High School Musical, not a sequel to High School Musical, but a reimagining of the franchise in a way. So he created a docu-style series um, about kids who go to the high school where the movies were shot. So us as students, we go to a famous high school where we know Zac Efron was here, Vanessa Hudgens was here, we make references to them in the show. And in the very first season, um, our new drama teacher decides to put on a production of High School Musical <laughs> at the school where High School Musical was filmed. So it's very meta, very layered, um, but ultimately it became a show about theater kids and the theater program at East High. And each season we got to do a different show. And so season one, we did High School Musical. Um, season two, we did Beauty and the Beast. And who was and Belle? I got, my character got to play <laughs> Belle in that. So that was a really big deal. Season three, we went to summer camp. So it really became a series about theater kids and their life in the wings or on stage and who they are as people. And, um, and yeah, so that has been a part of my life for the last four years. And it um, was really a catapult to... Uh, you know, everything or most of what I'm doing now. And um, it's still a huge part of my life. Season four is is coming out this year, which we're so excited about. And uh, yeah, it's it's been it's been basically my whole life for for the last four years. And I I wouldn't change a thing about it. It's it's marvelous. So do you have like your own huge following of fans that like thousands <laughs> yeah, 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 there's a, there, I mean, um, there's a huge fan base for Disney in general, right. of course, everybody knows Disney is truly taking over the world. Yeah. So um, anything that comes out of Disney really gains a very supportive and loving following pretty much from the get go. And so we were very fortunate to, um, we were, uh, we were the very first uh, original series that was scripted on Disney Plus, the very first that came out with the platform. Yeah. Um, the only shows that launched the platform in 2019, the only scripted series that launched the platform in 2019 were Star Wars, The Mandalorian, and High School Musical, The Musical, The Series. Right. So they really put us sort of at the, um, as, as front runners for this new streaming service that, that launched. And, um, yeah, and, and if you're, you know, a theater kid, a fan of High School Musical, a fan of Disney, this was sort of the perfect, um, the perfect thing for you to watch. So we did, we did gain a, a very wonderful and supportive following from the get-go. So have you done D23? Yeah. Uh, like that, that conference is insanity. Yeah, the craziest one was was D23. Um that's the that's the Disney convention yes, where that we perform. Yeah. yeah. So we we did that in 2019 before our show even came out. Mm -hmm. So people people didn't really know who we were, what the series was about. Um so they they introduced us at that convention in 2019 and we did a performance and there was a select um, audience group that got to watch the first episode and do a panel with us afterwards and this is pre-launch of the platform at all so that was huge um, and also a lot of us had never done a press event that large before so to, to go there and not even have the series be out was yeah, incredible. Yeah. And we got picked up for season two before the show even premiered. Oh wow. So Disney as itself, the corporation and the executives at Disney um, have really believed in the show since before audiences even saw it, which is a really huge accomplishment. So my first exposure to it was at Elsie Fest. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Where um, uh, I think Tim was there and, and Josh and Olivia performed, I believe. That's wow, right. that's great that you were there. Yeah. Yeah, that was, that was like OG, OG. Yeah. 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 Um, so before any kind of announcements were done. Um, they have this really wonderful, um, it's called Elsie Fest, where it's just an evening, well, afternoon and evening 
of performances of different things that are running on Broadway and Darren Chris heads this up. Um, and I was there with a friend just to take it all in and they showed clips from High School Musical, the musical, the series, and then there were, I think, two performances that happened. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. yeah, it was great. Oh my gosh, amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And it's great. Since then, we've been able to do lots of uh, sort of conventions and shows like that. We did um, D23 this year, which was a totally different experience from the first time we did it, because now we've had, at that point, three seasons were out now, right. and we were announcing season four, so... That, that was really exciting, and um, there's been Junior Theater Festival, and um, we've done panels for GLAAD and different award shows, and so it's really, uh, it, it, it's taken on a life of its own. And it's really I special. like when she tells me that the whole uh, cast of uh, High School Musical, the musical, the series, uh, do socially, uh, when somebody's performing, they go to see, they go together, yeah. and of course, they make quite an entrance, We're gonna, you know, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right? we, we're ex turned. sure we're, we're extremely supportive of each other. Um, it really is a family on and off screen. We're all extremely close with one another. And if ever anybody has a show or a performance, we're all there with bells on. I mean, opening night of Secret Garden, basically the entire cast that live in L.A., they were there. And that was really special. Yeah. Um, we sort of follow each, each other around to whatever we're doing. And I think that that will, um, will stay forever. And, you know, we're, we're really close and we love each other a lot. It's a very supportive environment. So let's talk about Secret Garden <laughs> since that was just brought up. Sure. Yeah. Little, Drops. yep. There you go. There well, you go. Good yeah, segue. Secret yeah. Garden at the Amundsen, which I, I understand, uh, in the showbiz, uh, uh, talk uh, to play the Amundsen is the <laughs> there's no place higher in LA than the Amundsen and suddenly uh, Julia is going to appear in one of the leads in the secret garden at the Amundsen and I know Jen you went to see you I did and, uh, of course I, I I went and uh, well we were we were five uh, of our family all together and then we had the the, the uh, wonderful time of taking Julia in between two shows because every Saturday and Sunday they had two shows to do and we took her to dinner in between uh, one of the Sunday matinees and, and um, yeah. could, could have the time to tell her how absolutely wonderful she was uh, in that. And then her, her terrific song, Hold On, um, uh, was played uh, uh, here on Channel 22 yeah. many, many times, and it uh, was enjoyed by everybody, Thank Julia. You. It was wonderful. Thank you. Yeah, I'm surprised there's still a roof on that theater. Because <laughs> you Thank were you. blowing the roof off it Thank every you. performance. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. That was, that was a really cool experience. Um, I am fortunate that I got to see the original cast at the um, St. James Theater. Incredible. It was an amazing show, and to see it reimagined in that way at the Amundsen, yeah. and seriously, Hold On is, is the number that turns that show around. People might think Lily's Eyes is the best song. It's not. <laughs> no. um, so having seen Julia from Dancing at Dance Dimensions to uh, Family Performances, to the stage of the Amundsen, what was what was that like? Well, you know, um, Julia is what you call a natural, and, and, and no, and, I mean <laughs> no. <laughs> well, it, no, if you really want to define the word, I mean, you know, it's tossed around in showbiz jargon. Um, oh, she's a natural, but this is this is exactly right. Um, it, it's the, the Frank Sinatra song. I, I did it my way. Julia lives her <laughs> life. I did it my way. I mean, she, she's sure. a, she, I once asked her, uh, how did you approach that little red riding hood with a part? And she said, well, because I really wanted, as an actor, I wanted to know, well, what kind of technique could you have used to have come out with, the, you know, that the New York Times should single you out as a little red? And she said, one of the things that she answered me, she said, well, first, I, I think of how 
how would everybody else have played, have, what would everybody else have done with this role? And that's not what I'm going to do. So okay. I just break the rules is all. There's no rules. There's no, there's no curriculum to follow. It's all about like fully, uh, breaking the rules and, and being, um, I don't know, just, just being sort of, um, free. Yeah. Thank you. Free. And, uh, I don't know. I mean, I, I believe so strongly in, in theater education and in acting education, but I also believe so strongly in literally doing whatever you want and like being, uh, independent in your choices and thoughts regardless of maybe what's been ingrained or what's been te- what's been taught to you. Um, and uh, I sort of try to, uh, try to approach most things with, with the mentality that um, I'm sort of going ag- against, the, against the norm or against the grain a little bit. And uh, it's just fun. It just makes things exciting and fun and um, surprising. And I love keeping people on their toes. <laughs> Well, I'm picturing her cast members watching her during rehearsal and thinking, where did that come from? <laughs> Yikes. I might be a little scared at first, but. <laughs> <laughs> so in subsequent performances back to Little Red, um, did the director then say to the person that was coming in after you, watch whatever Julia's doing and do that. Yeah, I'm actually not sure how that process goes considering I've, I've only ever been in one long-running production that then has a cast that follows afterwards. But, um, you know, Katie Garrity is currently playing Little Red uh, who took after me on, on, uh, on Broadway and then is now in the tour. And she is just fantastic and wonderful. And we've been a huge, you know, support of each other since, since we were able to meet. But, um, yeah, it's, it's very exciting that there, that there's sort of a, a shell of the show that was created with its original people and those that come after it can take inspiration or follow that shell if they please. And, um, you know, to know that, that I had a, a hand in creating this version of Little Red that's, you know, heard on the album as well is very exciting. And, um, to think even, even not the current production now, but to just think of, of kids around the world doing productions of Into the Woods, like I did growing up and listening to our album for reference or watching videos that have been, uh, released for reference. And to know that I, that my performance could be inspiring uh, another Little Red's take on the character is, is a huge deal. It's beautiful. And something that I grew up doing was watching all of my favorite performers in, in roles that, that I was either playing or interested in and taking inspiration from them. So to know that, 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 um, I could have a hand in that for another young performer is very full circle and very wonderful. Isn't that a giving thing? I just love that, Julia. <laughs> Thank I, you. I, I, that you have the other people in mind like that's beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about how proud you are of your grandmother. We've, we've been talking a lot the other way. Yeah. But she's still performing. Right. That's fantastic. Um, it's really... I, and I didn't mean to assume that you're proud of her. But. No, you're right to assume, though. You're definitely right. We're so proud. And uh, I think what's been really exciting in the last couple of years is watching you uh, blossom here at MPTF and find so many cool things to do besides just being a performer, which we all know you already are. But like you were saying, taking Spanish class. I, and love I know Spanish. you were in improv for a while and poetry and... Um, it's so wonderful when we get to have our lunch and go hang out because hearing the things that she's been doing here and the people that she meets and the people that work here and volunteer here, it's really remarkable. And to know that it's a full family and community here and you're so loved and safe and and thriving in so many different hobbies and things that excite you and bring you joy is like just incredible. And, um, I think it's really, really remarkable that you find so many things to fill your days here. And, um, you know, I, 
I'd like to add uh, to the activities, one of the, my most favorite activities is the Gray Quill. Yes, of course. The Gray Quill Society right. where, where we write. Yeah. And I was not a writer. Um, or, I, she said I mean, she or, says that, but she's well, always all been. Years, like, yeah, actually, I found a little book that we, when I was in fourth grade. And you don't it, need to be humble. And, she's and like it, an amazing and, writer. And, yeah, no, <laughs> I, I, I wrote oh, Hitler is a bad man. I, I so okay, wow. I, I was writing poetry or whatever you know when I was a little girl, but you know anyway, um, I. Oh, and remind me, I want to give you the book when we go to my cottage. Yes, I please. want to sign the book for you. Please and do. It's a, it's will, a, you t will you tell Jen what you wrote in the book, what your piece was on in the book? Well, one of the pieces in the Grey Quill book this year is called Julia. Ah, stop it. <laughs> <laughs> Who's number one now? <laughs> and and uh, I, asked, I asked her permission, you know, uh, to... Uh, to have it published because, uh, and she and she very graciously said, of course, you know, and, and she kind of likes it that she's in the book. Yeah. No. Oh, you, and, and I'll very quickly tell you that this, the story, because we talked about her being independent. We talked about her doing it her way. Mm -hmm. And here is <laughs> the story that is in the Grey Quill book about, it, it was um, sweats, sweatshirt day at Calabasas High and you were to wear the sweatshirt of the college that you were going to go to. So they all marched out, and there was Cornell and NYU and Stanford, and and out comes Julia, and it's blazing on on her sweatshirt said Warner Brothers. <laughs> so that's that, because that's just another thing that Julia decided when call it when high school ended, she's going into the business. Well, you know, I, I sat in the car, her car with her when she showed me the audition that Stephen Sondheim said, that's who I want to play, Little Red. And I said, Julia, I have never seen an audition tape like this. It's wonderful. Oh. This is before she got the role. I, I didn't know she was going to get it. I mean, I kind of thought maybe she would. <laughs> but um, that's that's the Julia that I wrote about in The Grey Quill. Oh. Was her independence and her way of thinking and her way of doing things, you know. Thank so. you. But, but thank you for um, telling everyone how much I enjoy being a resident. Yes. You know, when I was a, the wife of a board member and I would come here to different affairs, I would watch the people, um, the residents, that they would enter into their cottage or something. I would look and I would say, I, I would love to enter into a, a cottage and it'd be mine and I would live here. I said to myself, and I spoke out loud, and I said, when I'm 90, I'm moving into MPTF. And I really had this in mind for a very long time. Yeah. And I said, okay. And sure enough, um, but when I was 90, yeah, that's yeah. where that's, I came here. Yeah. I wanted to be here. You know, I just knew, I just knew that this was such a special place. Yeah. And that you could continue being creative. You know, I, I don't. Which you, which you uh, are so passionate about staying creative and always being creative and exercising your, your, cr the creative part of your brain and, and never stopping what you're passionate about and what brings you joy at, at any age, at any place in your life. And to hear how, much how much of a desire you had to to come here and and do that for yourself and now to know that it's happening yeah and she's so happy and so <laughs> joyous and lively and has stories beyond stories to tell every time we're together yeah oh we yeah. love to be together because boy she's got stories and uh, i guess i do too you got lots of stories <laughs> lots of them yeah have there been parallels have there been stories that that you shared that you were like oh something very similar happened to me when I was about your age. Do you feel like there's a parallel track? It's funny that you say that because the last time we got lunch, she was talking about how she was on tour for a play. Correct me if I'm wrong, but she was on tour for a play at 18 or 19 years old. And she was playing like the, the wife of the main, the, the, the male lead and I was like, I think it's so funny that you were playing a wife at 18 and I'm 23 now and can barely pass for older than high school. 
So that made me laugh. Oh, well, the reason, that you, you know, the, the little tiny thing that you got not correct is that it, instead of a tour, it was summer stock. Oh, summer stock. And right, right. in summer stock, you play everything. Sure. So sure. that's why I could play Arthur Treacher's wife in Blythe Spirit because it's summer stock. Right. And he's, you know, what by then, whatever, 770, and I'm, you know, 19, and that's okay. Because right. I did the same thing with Bela Lugosi right. in Arsenic and Old Lace. I played 80-year-old Aunt Martha at 19. Sure. You know, and, and I remembered that when I went to, to drama school, they there was a course in makeup, and I learned how to do, put the wrinkles in and the grayness. And wow. Stuff. So I, had, I made myself up as an old lady. Sure. So, yeah, that's why you can play anything in summer. Sure, stock. of course, of yeah. course. But I think if I did summer stock, I think I would still probably play only children. Uh, I don't know. No, no. Oh, no. Then you don't get the job. <laughs> All right. We'll see. When I go do summer stock, then we'll talk. Okay. I don't, so, there's hardly any summer stock left, unfortunately. <laughs> Which wife did you play in Blind Spirits? Um, uh, Ruth. The, not not Elvira. Okay. Not the ghost. Not the ghost. You played the, yes. the current wife. The, okay. the one who's a scamps of, yes. who are you talking to? Yes. You know, what? Yeah. And Arthur Treacher. You know, he really, really, and I guess I was, I guess I was good because he was a wonderful actor. And um, one night he went instead of all the way stage right, which is what he's supposed to do, he went all the way stage left. So after the show, I knocked on his door and I said, Mr. Treacher, did you wish to change the blocking? And he said, no, child, I was just testing your stage deportment. <laughs> Classic story. And, yeah. uh, and after that, he asked me to tour with him in, in Clutterbuck. Yeah, I think that's what I was referencing. Who did you play in that production? I didn't go to, I didn't oh, get you didn't. it. I didn't get it oh. because he made me fly to New York and meet his agent. And the agent said, he, Arthur, she's like a, a hick from a small town. And this is supposed to be a sexy good. I didn't know oh, anything please. about that. I, did, I said, oh, it's nice. He wants me to meet his agent. The agent goes, nope. Uh, so well. I didn't get the part. And Arthur was so upset. He took me to a French restaurant for lunch. And that was the end of the, my Arthur oh. Treacher story. Well, <laughs> See, you got a nice only, meal out of it, I guess. The only thing I know about Arthur Treacher is food. <laughs> Why? He, wasn't there a, a fish chain, a, like a fried fish chain, Arthur Treacher? Oh, I didn't oh, I know, know that. No, I, but uh, Arthur Treacher in a movie called The Little Princess danced with Shirley Temple. Right, right. Wow. Another one of the big movies that was very prominent in my childhood. Oh, I bet. Shirley, I mean, Shirley Temple. Shirley sure. Temple. I mean, as, a, Me as a young redhead, how could you not be obsessed with her? Okay, we have that in common. Because there they, you go. They, you know, a generation after, or two generations after, I was a Shirley Temple uh, fan, of course. Of course. Yes. And, uh, Who was it? Yeah. Right. Oh, she was magnificent little yeah. girl. Yeah. Um, I think that's what we're going to call this show, Generations. I love that. Yeah. That's cool. Oh, you mean, are you renaming your show? I'm renaming this show. Oh, wow. this, this I'm, I'm that powerful. <laughs> yeah, you are. <laughs> I love that. This is Generations. Okay. How cool is that? What do you think? Oh, gee. Um, well, um, that's um, okay. Yeah, I'll have to come on with an, an, an in between. Uh, with one of my kids. Uh, oh, right. This is There's an a, episode two. Of I know. We need sure. we need Kelly in here. Yeah. Oh man. Well, Kelly will be Kelly will be here in uh, in September in LA visiting because she's on her way to San Diego in September because they asked her to come back to play Fraulein Schneider in cabaret at the Old Globe Theater in San Diego. Yeah. Again, <laughs> what an amazing family. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Truly. <laughs> Thank you. Is there anything that you guys would have wanted to ask one another? Is there a question that you have that's like, you know, this is your moment? Um, well, I had said to Julia, I, I hope after uh, the movie that she's going to make uh, that she's going to get a dramatic, wonderful role. She answered me and she said she would love that. And um, I want I I want to know when you think about that intense kind of acting, um, is it something that you feel mm, I can do that? 
Um, yeah, yes, to an extent. I've never really done drama before. Most of the things that I have been uh, lucky enough to do have been comedy, which is fantastic and definitely comes more naturally to me. But I think the like really passionate actor part of myself wants to do something dramatic and do something Good. a little more um, mature and maybe a little dark. Um, that's Secret Garden. Secret sure. Garden was dramatic. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm thinking more, more in terms of, I guess, on camera. Yeah. But, but I mean, even in Secret Garden, there's like two comedic characters and I was one of them, which is fantastic. And I don't think I'll ever stray away from comedy. I think that that's really um, what's natural to me. Yeah. Yeah. D- yeah. Yeah. For sure. But, but, you know, the, the, actory part of me wants to sort of expand a little bit and try something dark maybe like even a thriller or horror movie some you know yeah, something I, totally I, I, was, I was thinking of the terms of movie when I sit when yeah I started, but, okay. something totally opposite uh definitely sparks my interest and will be a, a very big learning opportunity um when that ever happens yeah yeah is there something that you did to really tap into Blanche Dubois that you could pass on to Julia in that future moment when she's doing drama. (laughs) Um, I fell in love, I never met him, with Tennessee Williams. I would feel, if he walked into the room, I would throw my arms around him and I would say, I know what you were saying, I know what you were doing when you wrote Blanche Dubois. Mm -hmm. Because it is the epitome of Every emotion, uh, it is the most beautiful, um, dra- dramatic role I ever played. And so I say to you, um, if and the, the opportunity, not if, when the opportunity comes, and it will with you because you have just your face alone can move people just to look at you. It can move people. You will be extremely moving would be just to uh, tap into the inner uh, part of Julia that uh, is unique and you wish to express. And then there isn't very much more that you're going to need because Julia is uh, uh, unto herself uh, a a very special person. Thank you. Thank you. I think that's another similarity between us is being so... uh, into the text that we're performing. Um, I think I think that that's another really big similarity between us is that we really love the words that we get to say or the meaning behind what's been written and the hidden metaphors and, and really the, the writing of things. I think we both really find um, are a big vehicle in what our performance ends up being. That's so. true. Yeah. And important. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to direct? Do you want to produce? Like, it, it's your sister that's the machine, right? Yeah, both of them are. I, I definitely have a huge passion for uh, choreographing. I used to choreograph dances for my high school dance team, um, musical theater pieces specifically. So I would, I would love to choreograph one day. And, um, and I didn't really realize this about myself till uh, pretty recently that I, I do have very strong director instincts. I used to make music videos by myself on my mom's phone when I was like in middle school with like full storylines and angles and things that I didn't really realize were a product of having a sort of director mentality. And so I, I do think that I would love to be a director one day and I, and I love writing as well. So, you know, the, the, there's a world of possibilities out there. And, um, I think, um, you know, being an actor is like a wonderful central part of all the, of all the other things that I have an interest in as well. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. Sure. <laughs> um, that's about all the time that we have. This has been a real pleasure 
And please come back. And this stage is yours whenever you're Thank back you. in town and, and interested in, you know, fake playing the piano. Thank you. Oh, great. <laughs> great. I can do that all day. <laughs> you just call me right up. <laughs> um, is there any other thing that you want to share before we sign off? Um, no, except, um, in case it didn't come over yet, I ad utterly adore my granddaughter, Julia Lester. I love you. <laughs> and I adore my grandmother. I love you very much. This was very special. Thank you for having both of us here to talk about, yeah. to and talk my, about this. And I, and my family will enjoy eventually when we are, when we can have a copy, uh, they will enjoy this very much. Yes. It's a pleasure. Thank you. This is very special. So thank, thank you very you, much. Jen. Yeah. You're, you're a wonderful interviewer. You brought out the best in us. Yeah. <laughs> that was easy to do. It's Thank right you. there on the surface. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank My you. Pleasure. Thanks for being with us. What a fabulous time. Thank you, Julia. Thank you, Helen. Uh, there's more stuff coming up next. Don't miss it. We'll see you soon. Please for best performance by an actress in a featured role in a musical are Julia Lester. <laughs>